What's going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome back to a brand new video. Here we are with a, uh, a post commentary tool video. Obviously we have Atlantean Mermails piloted by myself and my friend Adam playing uh, Domain, or not Domain, uh, Extra Deck Monarchs on the right side, primarily Zolkin and then a lot of Xyz plays. Your standard Extra Deck Monarchs. Um, and he's playing my deck at the time. He has his own build as well, but his build does run Brilliant Fusion. And I have some duels of him playing that build. We were at our card shop uh, this day, so he didn't have that deck with him. He only had Cosmos, so I offered him let him uh, play my deck so we could get some varying matches. Um, I think it's been a while since it's been Mermails versus Monarchs. Uh, just because I really only had the chance to play against Cosmo. And, uh, you know, various other decks. You know, actually not really that many. Just Cosmo primarily. Um, but that's really all I've had access uh, to play against. But it's nice. We have to mi mix it up here a little bit. And uh, I'm going to be doing an updated uh, deck profile for Monarchs with Brilliant Fusion. Because uh, I do really want to try that engine out. Uh, it just seems very much more efficient than this build. Uh, just because you can send um, cards like Adia, and it just helps to add back banner stuff like Pantheism. Of course, that's what Foolish Burial can be for, but there's so many other utilities that Brilliant Fusion offers, like getting out, you know, Seraphonite for a level 5 to make rank 5 plays, and also offering itself as a tribute if you need it, tr a tribute like that uh, in the first place. So you see there, he went Pantheism into Tenacity, and then he goes Panzer Dragon. And then you're going to see him go Quick Draw Synchron. Going to be discarding, uh, looks like Erebus, or maybe that's idea. I can't really tell uh, from this view. So he's going to go right into Zulkin, setting one, and then summoning out Crystal Wing. Pretty standard uh, as far as the Zulkin plays go for Monarchs. Uh, with that one set back row, possibly Prime or Stormforth. Uh, obviously being the most, you know, optimal thing would be Stormforth. And then on top of that, having the Aether in hand to just really, uh, combo it off nicely. But in my hand, I have Raigeki and Gamaseal, so I can out the field pretty easily. Uh, and then Moray of Greed to top things off. Moray of Greed, such an amazing card. And, uh, I think this is one of the first games that I got to play with it at 3. My friend there on the right was able to, uh, just give me two copies of them, two commons. Uh, for free, so shout out to him for the hookup, and uh, was able to recycle there, or basically mulligan, or similar to like a Cosmo Town effect, put two waters back in the deck, draw three more cards, and I think I drew into Neptibus, uh, like Warning and Turge, so it was pretty solid draws. This build that you're seeing here is not the most up-to-date build. Um, it doesn't have some of the minor changes the most recent build has, like the change in the extra deck. You guys have seen the test hand video and the latest, uh, the deck profile. So this build isn't exactly the same. There's a few tweaks there and here that are a little bit different, but, you know, more or less it's overall the same. The warning I have, I currently don't play anymore. But you'll see, uh, lead tributing Teus to knock the Aether out of his hand, going into Dweller. Basically shutting down his whole play. We've got Megalo. Uh, we got, you know, Neptibus on field, lead has already tributed away Teus to knock a card out. Gonna grab Diva, set up for next turn, Megalo tributing Neptibus to make a second attack, and uh, get that Dragoons on the field, and you can see we've got Diva, Warning, Turge, and Mizuchi in hand. We're pretty stacked to go into next turn, but he's gonna be out of life points at that point. The OTK power, as we know, is all uh, too strong with Mermails, and that's why I love the deck so much. And you'll see on the Ixies, uh Monarch side, we'll have or Zulkin Monarchs, or Extra Deck Monarchs, I guess would be the, the, the term. You'll see he's going to go Red Layer, and then e Telly out Blue Layers, adding another Red Layer. At this point, he has two options. You could either tribute the, the Blue Layer for the Red Layer uh, to make a Rank 5 play, or he could do what he just did there and tribute both of those to uh, summon out Aether just as he does there, and uh, he has the option as well to shuffle back the blue and the red layer back into the deck thanks to blue layer's effect because this build, that my build on the right, does play two e uh, so be, by doing that he will make the second e live live uh, so long as he doesn't draw into the blue layer again obviously, and then, you know, 
immediately if he drew into like uh, another Italia. Obviously, it'd be dead then, but you could summon out of your hand. But you get what I mean. That's the beauty of playing two Italia and uh, blue hair being so awesome and its ability to recycle itself as well as other super quantums. Pantheism going to reveal three Stormforth. He'll summon out another Aether, basically searching himself an Aether. A pretty solid first turn. That Aether will turn back to his hand. The only way it could have been better is if he would have went first turn, maybe Zulkin and Crystal Wing. Although that board can be outed very easily with Gamma Seal and Raigeki. Or if he would have an Erebus, you know, making me lose some card advantage. See Neptibus here come out. Pretty good way to start off the turn. He'll chain Stormforth on summon. So I know he can uh, stop my plays. But he's going to let the Neptibus go. Sending Dragoons, adding Megalo, and a copy of Dragoons. Figures at this point he could probably stop more severe plays other than just Neptibus. So you see me summon out Teus, discarding Dragoons there. I can go grab a lead and Gund as per usual. I'm going to hit the set storm forth. Or not Stormforth, set Twin Twister, my bad. Uh, that's discarding a Marksman there. I thought that was Dragoon, so I get the alties mixed up. They kind of look the same uh, from the size that I'm seeing the, the video at and the editor. Uh, so we're going to be popping the Twin Twister. Obviously not too much of this, you know, this deck doesn't play too much back row. And then we'll see the, the real play come down where we're going to see Megalo discarding Gund and Turge. Gun specialing turd, surge activating on a new chain as well as him activating a new aether after completing and resolving that storm forth, sending two monarch spell trap, and then special summoning out an Erebus, getting that to his hand uh, in the end phase if I can't get rid of it. So this is the nice thing about Aether is when it summons something, whatever it summons, it does bounce back to your hand in the end phase. So you can also like inherently search yourself a card at the same time as summoning it because if it does stay in the field, it will ultimately get returned to your hand during the end phase. And you'll see Aqua Spirit there coming in so clutch to make a quick rank for stealing the special summon to Erebus and dropping Moulin Glacia to completely empty his hand. Um, now the one issue here is that I could crash uh, into his... Uh, I could crash into his Aether and uh, with the Moulin, but I'd lose my battle phase. And uh, this is kind of wish where I wish I was playing the cart Abyss Manor because if it wasn't my graveyard, uh, if I would have detached it off of that Honor Arc per se, and maybe summoned it off the, uh, the Gund, I could have uh, banished Abyss Manor from the grave to increase Taste's level by 1, making him level 8. Then going into a card like number 38, running over the Aether, being able to negate a spell next turn, being in a much better position. Um, so I think I do want to definitely get a copy of Abyss Manor. I just don't know how I'm going to get one. I don't personally own the copy. I don't really want to order one. I feel like that's a card I should just have somewhere. Um, I'll have to probably ask around for it. I'm sure somebody I know has a card that I can just trade for locally, make everything a little bit easier and not have to worry about buying one offline and waiting for it to get here. But I did order two copies of Surface. If you did see the test hand video, you know that. Two copies of Surface. And now that I know that Moray of Greed comes super rare, I need to order super rare Moray of Greeds. Uh, you know, just keep up with the rarity because Super Gamma Seals are coming and so is Alti Ragaki, so I gotta keep up with that. And you'll see uh, Erebus spinning away Honor Arc. And then he'll attack into both Neptibus and the defense position Teus. They go to the total of 2,000 damage. And now I need to out his field of Erebus and Aether. But at this point, the problematic issue of not having enough Dragoons is finally hit. Uh, because this is the point in the game where your grind game uh, doesn't become... Your grind game is kind of like not there. It's kind of non-existent uh, because Neptibus can only do you so much. Neptibus is only a powerful card during the very early stages of the game, depending on what turn you see it. If you see it turn one, you know, your grind game significantly decreases, but if you see it maybe turn two or three, then your grind game obviously extends its life a little bit. But that's why cards like uh, Emerald, I think, are now essential in the extra deck, at least for me, and after playing the deck for so long, and having to deal with this issue after so long, it's like, 
if you can't you know see constant abuse from dragoons and you know you're not seeing cards like um you know instant fusion it's hard to keep the the otk power going because you can't search your some of the strongest cards in the deck your sea serpents but luckily this more have greed uh, the first one that i resolved uh, drew me into a diva, and you'll see there I only drew two cards off that second moray. I know that was a stupid mistake. I should have been able to draw one more card. So you see, I flashed the double moray to the camera because it's such a nutty card, and it basically is what puts me back in the game here and allows me to pretty much win. It took me from having a pretty mediocre hand to having a pretty amazing hand. It gives me Gamma Seal, gives me Deep Sea Diva, and a lot of good cards. I'm not sure what else I drew either. I think it's Mizuchi in my hand. But just being able to draw into Diva and go into what looks like uh, a uh, heavy infantry and then being able to normal summon a marksman, you know, it's just along for such amazing plays. And I'm going to go into a level 7 synchro here. That's uh, going to be Odd Eyes Meteor Burst. And I can start summon Gamma Seal at this point. Uh, tributing away his uh, Aether or Erebus, and I'm going to be able to run over his, or at least my Gamma Seal for 300 points of damage. And then he's going to main phase 2, summon out Prime Mon Monarch, or end phase Prime Monarch. But I really kind of upset myself, I just forgot to draw that extra card that I should have drawn. That's just me for you, I'm just not smart sometimes, and I just forget things, and I don't know why I didn't draw the third card. And Whether it would have won me or lost me the game over there, who knows, I would just basically lose to him being able to have enough life points, and having the resources in his grave to the point where he can just go into uh, Volcasaurus and burn me for enough life points and then make uh, the Gaia Charger and swing in for game. So that is ultimately the reason I lost, is just not having enough life points. You know, taking 28 and 28 from the, uh, I think from the Aether and previous Aether and Erebus earlier on. So yeah, uh, again, just the stupid misplay there, not drawing that third card, but it's not like I wanted to not draw three cards, it's just something that just slipped my mind. And you'll see over there, he goes double set back row, uh, Stormforth and Prime Monarch. I end up discarding double Marksman, how perfect, but I end up hitting, you know, like I said, the Prime and the Stormforth, so I'm pretty much setting up his uh, Prime Monarch. I gave him fuel for it, basically, uh, kind of decreasing my OTK power. But we do have D.Va, did open up D.Va, so that's already a lit turn. I wanted to get, you know, uh, Megal on the board first because I wanted to be able to clear the back row because I wanted to make sure my Neptibus would go through, um, or my Diva would go through, so that's the reasoning behind that. And so then I drop Mulan, we get a quick Mulan setup, hits eight, or Erebus and Aether out of his hand, so he's already down four cards from his first turn, and uh, that's my field right now. I can go into Leo if I wanted to. Megalo coming out discarding Dragoons and Pike. The game is pretty much on lock at this point. It's basically just a matter of getting all the damage on board that I can get. Megalo will tribute away Tatsunoko for a double attack. Alright, so the cut there in the video is just basically a little discrepancy we had with where he wanted to summon his Prime. And again, this is a match from testing, so it's nothing really too serious. It's not like we're at a huge tournament or something where like the rulings would have mattered. Um, but he was able to block the attacks correctly, so the one Megalo wasn't able to get a direct attack. And uh, even though regardless of what he drew next turn, he just scooped right there with the very little light points that he had. And obviously the spell negation from the Megalo being a very key uh, card to seal the victory there. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed uh, this post-commentary dual video. I've been trying to, like I said, up the quality of all my videos lately and just uh, provide, you know, better content overall for you guys. And I'm going to be leaving for Florida very soon in a couple days. I think on the 1st of August I'll be leaving. So I need to stack a bunch of videos for you guys. So it's kind of stressful uh, getting like 14 or 15 videos pre-made and uploaded. And that way I can public them while I'm on vacation so you guys have plenty of content. To watch so you're not wondering where I am for two weeks um, but yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video did and if you did please do me a huge favor and leave a like on the video I cannot stress enough leaving a like helps so much and I hear a bunch of other youtubers say it it really does help out a lot and I like to see that you guys are enjoying the videos um, and it always leaves a little warm fuzzy feeling in my heart um, but yeah thank you guys so much for 2300 subs 
We just had that uh, like a day or two ago from when I'm recording this. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And continue to support me. You guys are awesome. Leave your comments down in the comment section below. And those guys want to kill. Signing out. We'll see you in the next one.